Okay guys, today we're going to fix this plastic top cover for the uh, 2100. So see the, see it's cracked on both sides. And it's oxidized beyond belief. So, what I wanted to do was um, epoxy these corners, get those fixed, and then we'll sort of experiment on this oxidized plastic and see which method works the best. We'll try some heat on it, we'll try the torch on it, and then ultimately we're probably going to end up sanding and painting it, but we'll, we'll fool around with it. See, I got some of this JB Weld, plastic weld. I got the putty because I feel like it might be a little easier to work with. So we'll try that out. And then I got some brake cleaner. That works good for cleaning surfaces before you're gonna paint them or epo epoxy them. And then, yeah, I got this bulldog stuff because we're probably gonna end up painting it. So this stuff is adhesion promoter. It makes paint stick to plastic, it works good. So anyways, I'll show you. So let me get the camera set up and uh, we'll put the epoxy on first and get that dry in. Yeah, it looks pretty good right there, huh? So yeah, see it's cracked in here and here. So I thought we'd take this putty and pack some of that in these corners and then we'll put some tape on it to hold it and let that dry, let that cure out. But first, we gotta prep the surface. So I got some sandpaper here some 60 grit that ought to work and so yeah you want to make sure you rough up rough up all them surfaces that you want to epoxy so the, the rougher it is the better chance it has of sticking so yeah just rough it all up sand it scratch it So see, there is some promise to sanding it to bring the orange back, so we'll see, we'll see. Okay, and I already washed this piece with some Dawn soap and water, so it's pretty much degreased, and then after you sand it, you could spray it with some brake clean just to make sure if you wanted to. I think it's nice and clean. So, what do we got for tape here? Ooh, some nice Gorilla Tape. That'll work good. We'll put some Gorilla Tape on the corners after we after we epoxy these. So let's take a look here. What do we got? Oh yeah, this stuff's cool. It already comes. Um, let's take the little cap off. See, it's got the half and half. So you just take off a chunk, big enough chunk that you think is going to work. That's probably plenty, I would say. And then you just uh, take into kneading on it. Oh yeah, we're kneading, we're kneading. You could probably wear gloves, probably not a bad idea, but I'm too lazy and stupid to put gloves on. <laughs> it won't kill me. This stuff's sort of cool, like once you start mixing it, you can sort of smell it. Mmm, I sort of like the smell of that epoxy. Still take into kneading. See that? See that? Okay, so now we're going to take it. And we probably need about an equal part on both sides. So I'm just going to take it and press some in there, just like that. Oh, yeah, that sticks in there good. Press it in there really good. See how it got in the crack? That's good, that's good. Because when we tape it, we'll pull it together. And then we'll put our other wad over here. Oh yeah, right in the corner there. Yeah, this stuff's sort of nice because yeah, it's, it's pliable. So we'll take some tape. Some Gorilla Tape. And just sort of strap that around the corner sort of hold it together okay so see my corners are taped so that's it we'll let that set up and then take the rest of it 
put it in your little container and you can save it for later. That's the nice thing about it, is it keeps for later. Okay, we'll let that set up and then we'll come back. Okay guys, it's been a couple hours. Let's see what this looks like. Ooh, it's nice and hard. Nice, let's take the tape off. Nice. Cool, it got into the crack pretty nicely. <clears throat> so, I think we'll let that harden overnight. I don't wanna mess with it too soon. I always do that to myself. I get too crazy and I try to mess with stuff too soon. So, we'll let that cure overnight. We'll set that aside. And in the meantime, let's see what we can do with this top cover here. So it's got these screws. I wonder if these screws will come out. I think they will if you push them. It'd be nice to get them out. Oh yeah, they come out. You just gotta push on them a little bit. Nice. So yeah, these are all rusty. We'll clean those up. And then there's some little rubber grommets in here. We'll go ahead and push those out too. It's always nice if you can remove as much of the stuff you don't want to get painted. And then we'll take a razor blade. I don't think we care if that sticker's on there, do we? I'm not going to try and preserve it. I had a razor blade. Oh, here. So I'll just... Just a bunch of safety crap. I mean, I guess if you were trying to do a authentic restoration, you could try and maybe trim around the edges and and uh, try to save it, but bag it, get it out of here. Oh, chop that baby off of there. Oh, nice. Yeah, it feels like oh yeah, it came off without without any glue. Nice. See, that's what it's supposed to look like. <laughs> and then, yeah, same thing with the stop cover. While we got the knife out, while we got the scraper out, you can actually, you can still get these XP stickers. I've seen them on eBay, so we'll peel that off too. While we're at it, you could while the uh, while the epoxy is still soft, you can sort of go like this and trim the excess with your knife. Makes it a little easier for later when you gotta sand it. Nice, yeah, the screws come out on that too. I thought they were rivets, but they're screws. Nice. screwdriver that fits right there we go okay so yeah we can just clean up all these metal parts okay now she's stripped down to the bare plastic let's take a look at this thing here so this one we're trying to determine if we're going to paint it or try to uh bring that orange back which <laughs> well I don't know about that this thing is massively massively oxidized let's take here let's just for fun just for fun let's take some of this 120 I think or 150 grit and just sand on this over here we'll see how much it actually Wow. Hmm. Sand her a little more. Sand her with some one fifty. Interesting. And then let's try this. Let's get out 
Le Torch. Let's see if that'll do anything. Actually, let's work our way up. Let's work our way up. Let's try the old heat gun and see what that does. Okay. So yeah, they say if you hit it with the heat gun, sometimes it'll bring the surface back now that we sanded a lot of that oxidization off. Put it on high. Let's see what happens. I don't want to get too crazy and like ruin this thing, so. Nope. That ain't gonna do nothing. Okay, let's try the torch. quit I can see the edges are trying to bubble yeah like I like I figured I think this thing is just too far gone let me try one more thing hold on it might do something after we sanded it and heated it a little bit let's try a little of this rubbing this heavy cut rubbing compound let's see just for the heck of it Hmm. It's not taking much of it off. So there. It's bringing some of the orange back. Here the here's the back part still pretty decent on it. Let's see what that looks like. So see if this whole thing was like this. You could just take this heavy cut compound and, or you could even power buff it with a buffer. But it doesn't take much on plastic. See, it's not bad. But the rest of this, yeah. I mean, maybe, here, let's see. Let's see, I got some, two, oh, here's some 600 grit. Let's see if that'll let's see if that'll phase it I mean I'm, I suppose if you spend a whole lot of time on this you can sand it and sand it and sand it and sand it with this 600. But it's just not bringing that color back very well. See, it's pretty shiny now. And then hit it with this compound. That's stuff you can do on, on stuff that's not quite as far gone. I don't know, it's not, it's not terrible. Huh? I wonder, I wonder if a guy did just sand that whole thing down and just rub the heck out of it with some compound. And then this piece of plastic, this is like almost like a different type of plastic. You see the color, the coloring is different. Like this is really rigid plastic and this is more like flexible, like rubbery plastic. So I don't know. We'll have to keep playing around. But yeah, I mean, to match the patina of the rest of the saw, this almost wouldn't look that bad. Like if, like if you could get the whole top cover to look like this. I mean, that's not terrible. See, it's got a shine back to it. So I don't know. 
I think at this point, I think we'll just maybe sand it and paint it. Because, yeah, I mean, you'd have to work, like, for hours on this to get it. I mean, you could probably sand this, just sand the hell out of it and polish on it forever. I think for this guy, we'll just sand, we'll just paint it. Let's just paint it. But it was interesting trying, trying, here, let's try while we're waiting for this thing to dry a little more. It's still, let's see what this, let's see what we can get this thing to do. Just out of curiosity. Like I said, this almost feels like a different kind of plastic. Hit it with some 600. And you gotta be careful with your grits. You see how I did the see how I did the 150? You gotta be able to come back. I almost need like some 180, some 180, and then some 600, but I don't got that. See, that brings that orange back pretty good. Let's see what that does if we polish it. cover responds pretty well to the sanding and to the sanding and polishing but then we're gonna have like two different kinds of oh, I can already see I'm gonna have to trim on that epoxy a little bit see how it's holding it up over here that's okay we can hit it with the with the little Dremel tool I think I'm just gonna I think we'll just sand this and paint it but look at that it's that part's actually coming out wonder if I got some 220 let's see what 220 does just for the heck of it so we'll hit this with the 220 and that'll get those 150 grit sandpaper marks out you got to sort of progress up there now we can now we can do the 600 what a guy really should do is like maybe maybe a 150 180. 220, 400, and then maybe some um, 600 grit. But this works for demonstrational purposes. But the suck part about this is I'm still going to have these cracks back here that are going to show. So we might as well just paint the whole thing. Wow, look at that. Oh, look at that. That actually works. Hmm. Huh. Interesting. That actually worked on this thing. Yeah, it's a little... A little bit darker. A little bit darker. It's sort of an odd color. So yeah, maybe we'll... Maybe we'll paint it just because, because look at this. The saw is more like this color. But we have these cracks that we had to fix, so we're gonna have to paint that anyways, but. It was a fun little experiment though. Look at that, look how nicely that cleaned that up. So if you just do your progressions, you know, hit it with maybe some 150, like if it's really heavy oxidization. Just progress down 150, 100, you know, uh, 180, 400, and then go to your 600, and then polish it. You can clean some stuff up. But for this one, I think we're just going to paint it. 
That was a fun little experiment anyway. So anyways, let me scuff her all down and I'll show you. Okay. I got this guy all sanded. So yeah, see it would take forever and a day to try and sand this thing and polish it. So we gonna paint it. So I hit it, hit it with some 220. And then we're just gonna take one of these little scuff pads. Make sure you get around all the corners and edges everything has to be scuffed really well so yeah looks like she's ready and then I always like to blow the stuff off with some air this thing's still drying so I'll blow this off and then I'll spray it with some brake clean and then I'll show you how I paint it okay so we're ready to paint this top cover and so what I like to use is this Bulldog stuff. Makes paint stick. Adhesion promoter. It's made by Clean Strip. Anyways, this, um, basically, they use this a lot in, like, on plastic bumpers on cars and stuff like that. Makes the paint stick to them. <clears throat> and it stays sort of flexible. So, we'll just hit this guy. With a coat of that. And it's just clear. So there's that. Let that dry and then you let it dry until it's tacky. So we'll give it a second. Okay, looks like it's dry enough now. So we'll shake our can up real good. But yeah, I've used that bulldog on a lot of these chainsaw parts and it holds up really well. <clears throat> the paint doesn't peel as far as I can tell so far. So we'll just give her a little orange paint. Just a light coat at first, remember. Oh yeah, that's gonna look way better. Okay, she's ready for another coat. I think two coats ought to be enough for this guy. It's covering pretty good. Nice. Okay, here's that other part of the top cover, guys. It's all ready to put some orange on. I sanded the epoxy on the corners there. It's nice and strong now. And I put the uh, Bulldog adhesion promoter on it. So now I just got to put some orange on it. And then uh, we'll see what the whole thing looks like all put together. Okay, guys, there it is. All painted up in all its glory. It still ain't perfect, but it looks a hell of a lot better than it did. So yeah, that'll look good on there. See the corners are all looking nice on it now. So yeah, that ought to look good on there. Almost too good. I might have to touch up some other stuff on the saw to make it look, to sort of go with it, but it'll look good, it'll look good. It'll get used, it'll get scuffed and beat a little bit, then it'll fit right in. So yeah, there you go, guys. Hopefully that uh, helps you out with some projects. Maybe gives you hope on fixing some really nasty stuff. So anyways, until the next one, we'll catch you later.